Teaching Slope Concepts with GeoBoards In this video, you'll see how to use GeoBoards to teach students how to find the slope of a line. We'll look at this two ways, first intuitively by counting the rise in the run, and then by finding the slope of a line between two points on a coordinate system. The manipulative we use here is a geo board, a board filled with a grid of pegs, and we use rubber bands to model lines. The rubber band works well to model a line because we can stretch it to form a right triangle, so we can count the rise in the run. In my opinion, slope is the first topic algebra students encounter that involves motion, a critical concept that will take them through to calculus. Using geo boards and rubber bands gives students a concrete way to experience this concept. As they stretch a rubber band to form a right triangle, they see how the rise and run relate to the line. This activity is especially good for kinesthetic learners, as it eliminates the need to memorize a formula and replaces it with an activity. We place a rubber band between two pegs of the geo board to model a line. To find the slope, we need to count the rise and the run, so we stretch one side of the rubber band to form a right triangle. Now we can count the rise, up 6, and the run, counting left to right, is 5, so the slope is 6 over 5. When I introduce this topic, I always count the run going left to right, just like we read in English. This keeps the denominator of the slope fraction, the run, always positive. It's the numerator that will determine the sign, positive when the rise is up and negative when it goes down. Students who have never seen this topic seem to intuitively understand it this way. Once students have understood the concept of slope and practice calculating slopes of positive and negative lines, they're better able to deal with positives and negatives in the run as well as the rise. We'll model a negative slope on the next slide. Here we have a line sloping downwards as we go from left to right. To make the right triangle, we'll stretch the rubber band down 6 units and then over 8. With students new to the concept of slope, I always model the rise first and then the run, so that students hear the words in the same order that they put them in the formula, rise over run. You can be more flexible later. So here the rise is negative 6 and the run is 8 giving a slope of negative 6 eighths. We can reduce this fraction, of course, to negative 3 fourths, and then show on the geo board how this describes the same line. Modeling horizontal and vertical lines on the geo board makes those special slopes make sense. For this horizontal line, we can clearly see that the rise is 0 and the run is 5. So the slope is 0 over 5, 0. The slope of a horizontal line is 0. This vertical line has rise 7, but the run is 0, so the slope is 7 over 0. Since division by 0 is undefined, we say that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. We can even use a geo board to model the coordinate system and find the slope of a line between two points. We model the x and y axes with two rubber bands stretched perpendicularly across the center pegs. Now we have our familiar Cartesian coordinate system. The point shown here has coordinates 4, negative 2. Let's see how we can use the coordinate system model to introduce the slope formula. This rubber band is stretched between the points negative 3, negative 1, and 4, 1. Now we form the right triangle we need to find the slope. We can count the rise up 2 units. But we can also get 2 by subtracting 1 minus negative 1, the difference in the two y coordinates. Similarly, we count to find the run equals 7 units. This is the same as subtracting 4 minus negative 3, the difference of the two x coordinates. Let's put these into the formula now. The slope is the rise over the run, 1 minus negative 1 over 4 minus negative 3. We said before that this is the difference of the coordinates, so we can write the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This gives the slope of 2 sevenths, the same as we got by counting. 
Here are some suggestions for using geoboards to introduce your students to slopes. Ideally, you'd have enough geoboards for each student to have one, but the activities work well with students in pairs too. I start by modeling one positive and one negative line and show my students how to count the rise and the run. Then I tell them to make their own lines on the geoboards and find the slopes. I give them a paper with several images of geoboards to record their work. I spot check the papers as students are engaged in this free play. I make sure they include both positive and negative lines. Some students need to be reminded to make right triangles, not just any triangle. Others may be counting pegs instead of spaces. And there do always seem to be a couple of artists who are using their rubber bands to make designs on the geoboards. I gently remind them that they can pursue their artwork outside of math class. After most students have successfully found the slopes of several lines with positive and negative slopes, I ask them to model a horizontal and a vertical line and to find their slopes. Then we have a short wrap-up discussion. I wrote a worksheet to give my students practice finding slopes of lines on a coordinate system. The worksheet includes specific exercises and images of a geoboard like the one I've shown here with X and Y between positive and negative 5. I model using rubber bands to form the X and Y axes and locating points in this coordinate system. I remind my students how to use a third rubber band to model a line and find its slope by counting the rise and the run. Then I pass out the worksheet. On it, my students work two kinds of problems. First, they're given two points and asked to model the line and find its slope. Then they're given one point in the slope and asked to model that line. They model each exercise on their geo board, then record the work on the worksheet. After students have completed the worksheet, I usually introduce the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our pre-algebra curriculum doesn't require it, but having experienced counting the rise and the run visually and kinesthetically, most students understand the formula. You can find geoboards at teacher supply stores and catalogs. Rubber bands are readily available office supplies. You can find online images of geoboards if you want to print paper copies to use in worksheets. You could also use these paper copies instead of real geoboards if necessary. Virtual geoboards can be found at the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives website under the geometry strand. The intended use of the geoboard activity is to make polygons and then find their areas and perimeters, but you can use them instead to model lines and make right triangles to count the rise and the run. This activity is truly interactive. Using your mouse, you can stretch the rubber band just like a real one. The geoboard coordinate activity shows the x and y axes, so you can use it to find the slope of a line between two points whose coordinates are given. In the geoboard activity, we first clear the default polygon and then pick up a rubber band. Let's use it to make a line. And now we stretch it into a right triangle. We're ready to count the rise and the run. This is what the NLVM's GeoBoard coordinate activity looks like. The axes are shown in light gray. You can use this activity to locate two points on the plane and find the slope of the line between them. I hope you'd like to try introducing slope concepts to your students by using GeoBoards. This is Marianne. Goodbye.